Redditors with thin walls. What have you heard in your apartment? Story one. In college, I lived in a crappy apartment nearby the school that was mostly populated by students. Halfway to class one day, I realized I forgot a book and had to rush back to my apartment to get it. As I was running up the stairs, which shared a wall with the stairs in the next door apartment, which mirrored my own, I could have sworn I heard someone yelling. I ignored it and ran to my room to grab my book. As I clambered downstairs, again I heard yelling and I paused to listen. I heard some unintelligible moaning and eventually heard the words, help me, weakly groaned from the stairs next door. I rushed out and tried their door, but it was locked. I totally forgot about my class and ran to the apartment management office, hoping that someone was there. A manager was, thank goodness, and after I explained the situation, she grabbed her master keys and we booked it back to my neighbor's place. She opened the door and the poor guy was laying in the stairwell. It was one of the ones that goes up halfway to the second floor, then turns 90 degrees for the rest of the way, clearly having fallen. I called 911 while the manager ran over to the guy. Ambulance came and picked him up, and I later learned that he had fallen down the stairs after passing into a brief diabetic coma. I guess he hadn't eaten in some time. I don't know too much about how diabetes works. Anyhow, to this day, I feel grateful that I forgot that book. That poor guy could have passed away, slumped halfway down the stairs with his face in the carpet. Edited to add, Also, relevant to the thread, I was grateful for the thin walls. Just for that, though, thin walls suck. Edited again to add, Thanks, stranger. Baby's first Reddit gold. Story 2. I once heard a former roommate laughing with his then-girlfriend about how they're flipping me over on money. Turned out they were taking my utility portion and buying various games and alcohol. Instead of confronting them, I confirmed what they said with the utilities company. They hadn't paid the bill as two months. And I moved all my stuff out that day while they were at work. For good measure, I took myself off the lease and told them about the GF that had been there six months. Story 3. My downstairs neighbors are a couple with a one-year-old boy. The baby's room is right under mine. They speak so sweetly to him, I'm not even mad that I can hear them so clearly. One morning, the dad went in to get the baby out of bed, and I hear him go, Can you say daddy? Can you say daddy? And in the tiniest little voice I heard daddy, my heart melted. Story 4. Years ago, I had an upstairs neighbor. At 2 a.m. every night, I would hear something sprint across the entire apartment. I realized three things. It was very fast, it took small strides, and it never deviated from its path. One day, I saw my neighbor outside, and I said, I don't know how you have energy at 2 a.m. He responded with, Dude, I've been working the midnight to 8 a.m. shift for 15 years. Doesn't bother me at all. That night, I watched him leave his house, drive off, and waited two hours. At exactly 2 a.m., I heard what sounded like two feet hit the floor in his bedroom, and the marathon started. A few weeks later, I see him outside. I tell him what I hear at night, and he says, That's strange. No one has my keys. It's just me and my rabbit up there. Story 5. I actually manage an apartment complex where my office is surrounded by a one-bedroom unit. The building is old and the walls are thin. The tenant that used to live in the unit was a quiet man, but would frequently sing beautiful opera music. His voice was amazing and I loved it every time I heard him sing. Then one time I saw him in the halls and made the mistake of asking if he was the one who sang these beautiful opera songs. His face turned red, but he confirmed that it was him. I told him that I always enjoyed it when I heard him sing and that it would always brighten my day. Never should have said anything because I never heard him sing again. Story 6. Not in my house, but I travel a lot for work and stay in a lot of hotels. So far, my favorite was hearing someone banging around in the shower for a while, then this exchange. Loudly. Hey! Wash my balls! Louder. Wash your own goddamned balls! Yelling. Fudge you! Your cat stinks! They got quiet after that. Probably because they heard me howling with laughter and realized people could hear them. Story 7. In our old apartment, our upstairs neighbor had extremely loud, theatrically enthusiastic close relationship in the middle of the day. The puzzle was that he would stop in the middle and we'd hear him walk to where the bathroom is, stay there for a minute or two, and then walk back and resume in the bedroom. It was the same pattern every time. We could never figure out what that was all about. Any ideas welcomed? Story 8. I moved from far away, so I have a different state license plate than everyone else at the apartment complex. A couple of days ago, I had my upstairs neighbor drunkenly ranting to his wife about what he thinks I'm up to. He's convinced that I'm on the run from something. I'm just in grad school, El Mao. Story 9. 1. Lots of flipping, too. My presumably constipated neighbor trying to poop. A.K.A. 5 minutes of grunting and heavy breathing. 3. Someone snoring like what I can only describe as a diesel truck, revving its engine. 4. A little girl practicing playing what I think was a violin every night for a while. 5. Someone blasting Middle Eastern music. I shazammed it, and the song is called Mundi and Tabak Key 6. What sounded like a woman forcing herself to puke, with lots of crying. IDK if she had food poisoning, or was bulimic or what. Edit. 
Apparently the song is Indian, not Middle Eastern. I honestly had no idea. Story 10. I lived next to a couple some years ago and they came home after a night out and started fighting about who was better at darts. I thought they were joking, but it got pretty heated. Doors were slammed. Edit. Since people are asking, they were playing darts at the bar earlier that night. From what I could tell, they were playing as a team, and the boyfriend wasn't pulling his weight and was super defensive about it. Had an off night, allegedly. The girlfriend was mad he couldn't accept she was better. I'm no detective, but think they had some relationship issues bigger than darts. Story 11. More what my neighbor heard. I'm a deep sleeper and was an even deeper sleeper as a teenager. My phone alarm was going off for 30 minutes and my neighbors could hear it through the walls, assumed it was a burglar alarm and called the police. Waking up to the police banging on my door was confusing. Story 12. The way my old apartments were laid out, the neighbor's bedroom was right next to my kitchen dining room. One night, I hear them banging. Thin walls are thinner when the bed is hitting the wall. While I was fixing dinner, I just turned up the music and continued on with my life. Two hours later, I was cleaning up, doing dishes, and generally tidying up when I heard the familiar thump-thump-thump of banging. I think, good for them, and bag up the trash to take out. Thump-thump-thump. I open the door and take my bag of trash outside. As I'm walking out, I see the male half of my thumping neighbors, walking in from his car. Walking back from the dumpster, I see a half-dude running out of the neighbor's apartment. They moved shortly after that. Story 13. When I was an older teenager, I had my own tiny apartment in the hood and a raging, unpleasant person gang member for a boyfriend. We would get in raucous fights, and my downstairs neighbor would call the police. One time, I was crying quietly after a particularly bad fight that had gotten physical, and I heard my neighbor arguing with her husband, No, I'm not going to mind my own business and ignore it. I don't care that he always comes back the next day and she forgives him. One day, he's going to really hurt her or terminate her, and I'm not going to live with knowing that I sat there and did nothing when I knew a girl was being abused. I was naive and in love, I thought, and ignorant and young, and I had never considered it abuse. That felt so melodramatic, but I realized that my neighbor was right. Finally left him for good after that fight. So, good-looking out random lady in East L.A. in 1999, I'm sorry for being the worst neighbor imaginable. Story 14. I used to live in a sketchy building and my landlord lived right underneath me. My landlord was a weird guy, and there were all kinds of rumors about him the whole time I lived there, but I just tried to chalk it up to gossip. There were a ton of homeless people in the neighborhood, which was fine. They were just part of the neighborhood, and anyone who lived there knew them. A lot of days they would hang out on our front stoop, and no one really cared or made an issue out of it. Anyway, I would often hear knocks that sounded like they were coming from the windows, not the front door. I would try to run over and catch whoever it was, but could never catch anyone in time. So one night I hear the knocking while I'm in bed, and it sounds like it's from the window right under me to my left. So I look down real quick, see one of the regular homeless guys in the neighborhood, and see my landlord open up the door and let him in. So I lay there listening, wondering is going on. And as clear as day, I hear the homeless guy say to my landlord, I need something to eat. I was just wondering if you needed a back rub or something. That's when I realized all the rumors I had heard about my landlord and tried to brush off were actually true. Story 15. Upstairs, neighbors were a single mom and teenage daughter. They were very loud. The mom's room was above my room. One day I had off and was woken up by close relationship upstairs. It was pretty common in the previous couple weeks. This time, though, someone came in and started screaming. You're having close relationship in my Y bed? Turns out the daughter had been skipping school and coming back to the apartment with her boyfriend. They were the ones having close relationship in the mom's bed. The fight that ensued should have earned both women awards. Story 16. They warned me about you. I never should have married you. My 60 yo neighbors. And recently, a heated argument between different neighbors, adult kids. The son had caught his son, 5-yo, playing doctor with his sister's daughter, 4-yo. They argued very loudly about it in their back garden, which is completely surrounded by other houses and apartments. I think at least 30 households could hear it. Edit. Playing doctor means getting and comparing bits. Story 17. I heard my roommates having close relationship very loudly. I didn't say anything at the moment, but sat them down the next day and talked about it. Turns out the boyfriend was at work during the time it happened edit. Thanks for my first silver. I have never gotten one. This is awesome how much attention this got. Story 18. When I was in grad school, I lived below a family with several young kids. The mother was great and we got along well. She was always apologetic about kid noise, but I didn't really mind. The compromise that worked for us was that it was okay for me to play an amplified guitar, as long as it wasn't late, because her kids liked it and would dance to it when they could hear it. Story 19. My landlord, his wife, couple of times per week, she screamed like a... They were on the first floor and I was on the second one. Sometimes, if I'd walk above their bedroom, and they heard it, they'd stop for a couple of seconds and go right back to Boner Town after. Edit, forgot something. So, yeah, we were three guys living in the apartment, 
and we'd often invite some girls over, friends, to have dinner and drinks, but we would usually stay up pretty late, and it would be in the middle of the week, pretty much once a week. They were the kind of girls who laugh talk pretty loud, and our landlord asked us if we were having orgies. He wasn't even kidding, didn't know how to respond to that, so we just laughed it off and kept him wondering. Story 20. Neighbor worked a lot and hired a new sitter. New sitter invited two guys over. Kids were only three and one. Heard her say, if we leave to go to the corner store now, the kids will be fine alone for 20 minutes. And heard them talking about popping some of mom's Xanax and selling them. Then they promptly left. I walked out, knocked on the door, and the three-year-old boy came out. I called the police, went into the apartment, found mom's work number next to the sink, and she was furious. Left work and came back home. And as she was walking up to thank me and the officers, the babysitter and guys came into the complex. Mind you, this was all within an hour, not 20 minutes lol. Mom whooped babysitter, then called babysitter's mom, and she got another whooping. Got offered a sitting job after that and took it. LOL. Also have heard one of my neighbors talking in tongues and yodeling. Glad I don't live in apartment anymore. Story 21. I lived next to a guy who was schizophrenic. At first, the stuff I would hear freaked me out. But after getting to know him, I realized he was a really nice guy. There was some pretty sad stuff, but some of it could be funny too. My favorite was when his voice took on this righteous southern preacher tone as he reprimanded all of his appliances like microwave oven. Are you going to join me in the afterlife? No! Miniature refrigerator! Are you going to escort me E through the valley of the shadow of death? I think not. And then my favorite, simply, printer, fudge off. Story 22. I lived in an apartment where the kids next door would begin kicking and banging on the walls and making all kind of noise on any given day starting at around 6. 7 a.m. and continuing for hours. I eventually came to find out that their mother would lock them in a bedroom and leave for hours on end to do God knows what. Story 23. I lived under some Cubans who played air supply when they had close relationship at the absolute loudest volume they could. They also really enjoyed soccer football, and the woman would make sounds like a siren. Just long extended for minutes on end whenever something exciting happened. They were pretty terrible neighbors. Really obnoxious and loud all the time. They would mop their patio and the dirty water ran all over our porch. They also poured out used mop water off the patio too. The parking was terrible in that complex and they would occupy two spaces with one vehicle. They pretended not to speak English whenever we tried to talk to them, even before all the problems. I tried to be friendly with my neighbors, but they would also speak loud English right outside our apartment as if we couldn't hear them. So one day I tried to say hello to them and got a terse, rude reply in Spanish followed by no comprendo. So I casually asked my sister if she thought the guy knew his wife was sleeping with that blonde they always had over. Not made up, they were having an affair. There was lots of screaming from their apartment later on. No regrets, edit, silver, noise. You guys are the cow. And these comments are great. Story 24. My last apartment had particularly weak walls between apartments. One night I was reading in bed and I was unknowingly the third party to a particularly nasty fight between the couple living next door. The fight last for almost an hour and was apparently the end of their said relationship as she was going to leave him in the apartment the next day. The longer the fight went on, the more interested I became as I pieced snippets of the reason for the fight together. I did not know them personally, only enough to wave and say hi, help them with carrying up groceries, etc. Good neighbor stuff. It seemed couple A, both early 30s, were becoming bored with their close relationship life. For whatever reason, they decided that they would fulfill a fantasy of theirs and invite a third individual to join them. Male A and female. A found through some online means male B to join them. I guess things worked out for a while. From the snippets of the fight, I caught male B had joined them on multiple occasions for various close relationship escapades. The kicker was female A came home early from a work trip and found male A and male B deeply engrossed in their close relationship acrobatics without her. Female A flipped out. And I guess after that point, they tried to patch things up, but she caught both of them on two other occasions, the latest being the night before fight night that I was unashamedly listening to. Neither neighbor would hold my gaze for long the next morning. I think they were too embarrassed or ashamed to ask if I had heard anything and presumed I heard it all. I even offered to carry a box of stuff she was lugging out of the apartment. Remember, good neighbor. She mumbled something and said no. He was packed, moved out, and gone a week later. Needless to say, it was the most interesting thin-walled apartment experience I have had the vicarious pleasure to be part of. Edit. Thanks for the interest in replies, folks, and the kind stranger in silver. Wish I could tell you what happened as a follow-up, but alas, I have no idea what happened to the troubled trinity in the tryst. Edit. My humble thanks to the gracious golden guest for your gift, gracias. Story 25. Pre-dawn hours, blizzard outside, everything still and quiet. 
My roommate and I heard our neighbor on the other side of the firewall fart, wet and deep like a stifled baritone sax, and exclaimed to himself in a twisted combination of awe and disgust, Oh my God! We burst out laughing and hear him chime in with pride, Did you guys hear that? Vindicated that his fart was heard and forever lives in our memories. Story 26 One day my neighbor was spontaneously singing the national anthem, America, and stopped midline and cussed because they messed up the words. So I sang the correct next line and they burst out laughing before coming back in and finishing the song with me. I've still never met that neighbor. 1010 Voice Story 27 My parents told me stories about the apartment they lived in when I was a baby. The lady above us was a classically trained pianist, and her music room was above my room. Apparently, when I would start crying in my crib, she would start playing and I would go right to sleep. After my parents divorced, my dad stayed in the same apartment. A few years later, when I went to visit him, I was about 10 or 11, I got to finally meet her for the first time. The woman who used to play me to sleep as a baby taught me how to play the piano 10 years later. Edit, wow, thanks for my first silver, guys. I am sad to say I retained very little from our lessons, but I can play a mean chopsticks. Edit, and gold too? Okay, that's rad. Y'all like me? You really like me. Story 28. Help me, please? He won't let me go. I went and knocked on the door. Guy opened the door with his pants halfway down while a woman behind him kept screaming that he wouldn't let her go. He told me to fudge off and close the door. I called the cops and apparently I stopped the guy from assaulting the girl. Felt good. Story 29. An ex-girlfriend as I lived in an apartment with upstairs neighbors would yell and scream at each other on a constant basis. It came to a head when the woman started beating their dog. We heard the poor dog yipping and howling and ended up calling the cops, and they had their dog taken away. We also took in a kitten that they had that showed up at our door with its whiskers off and a cane burn on its head. The woman showed up at our door demanding her kitten back and backed down when we threatened to call the cops again. These people were not winners. They ended up being served an eviction notice eventually, squatted there anyway, and were arrested. I have no idea what happened to them after that. Story 30. When I was young, around 10 years old, I remember sitting in my parents' room with my dad. We lived on a college campus and both heard very clearly a woman in the apartment next door getting the absolute nonsense beat out of her by a man. The next day, we saw detectives, not just regular police, outside the apartment. I told my day we should say something, and he let me know that he didn't want to get involved. It still haunts me to this day 20 years later. Story 31. Recently, downstairs girl has acquired a dog that, one, she doesn't take on walks, two, she leaves at home, out of a crate. I hear her come home and yell scream throw cow at this poor dog. It's heartbreaking. And since no one else in the fourplex is home, I am kind of scared to call animal control in case this crazy bad person decides to make my life hell for reporting her. Suggestions welcome. This has been tearing at my conscience for the last two weeks. Edit. It's been reported. Story 32. Father used to live in a trailer park. I have nothing against trailer parks, but this one was pretty bad. We heard a loud bang sounded like a point two two. It wasn't overly loud. Then... Did you get him? Voice two. Yeah, he's dead all right. First voice. That'll teach him not to go near your sweets. Cops were called. Turns out these guys a cockroach with a handgun. Both arrested for candy charges, one with discharging a firearm improperly. Story 33. Every night I would hear my hardcore alcoholic neighbor puke in the sink, jam to her party music, usually concrete blonde on full blast, puke again, drag her fold-out bed out of the closet, then turn on all her fans to go to bed. Her routine. I stopped hearing it. All I heard were the fans. Knew in my gut something was wrong, but kept pushing it away. I was avoiding her in order to build up some boundaries between us. Silence for five days straight. She had been dead in there for five days. Autopsy said heart and liver issue due to chronic alcoholism. After the body was removed, I let her son into her apartment as I had a spare key. Some decomposition on her rollout bed, but no smell other than her usual smell. He thanked me for being the only regular person in her life, and I felt so guilty. Keep an ear out for silence, friends. Story 34 late to this thread. But for a while I lived next to some Mormon missionaries. Super nice girls. I once apologized to them because my bird was a bit of a squeaker. They told me they didn't mind. I was home sick from work one day, and they were singing to my bird through the wall. It was so cute I almost passed away. Story 35. My neighbor has a lot of cats. If anyone who's encountered cats before, you know that when they're in heat, they tend to make these god-awful flipping screeching noises. It sounds like something out of a horror movie. One night I was sleeping after working a 16-hour shift, only to hear that cow coming from the other side of my bedroom wall. I almost called the police. Story 36. I've heard my neighbor giving his granddaughter a xylophone for birthday, I guess. She could play it well and kept playing for a while. Immediately after she left, I could hear him trying to play something his granddaughter played. 
He practiced for a solid hour until he managed to play this song correctly and stopped with a joyful, yes. It was one of the purest things I've ever experienced. Story 37. Oh boy, my old neighbors were the absolute worst. Their apartment was behind mine, so we shared a bedroom wall. Loud, close relationship as well as full-on fights at 4 a.m. I heard the entire breakup. She told him to just leave, and he did. She wasn't expecting that, I guess, and spent the next several hours sobbing and yelling, Why are you doing this to me? She also called him about 40 times with no reply, then got to hear all her rebounds, one of which came over around 2 a.m. and couldn't keep it up, which led to her yelling at him. That didn't stop them, though. They kept trying for hours, and when we knocked on the wall, they flipping knocked back. Bad person! I have a job to get to in three hours! God, I hated her! Another time I overheard her almost overdose in the bathroom. The BF called her parents who called an ambulance. When her BF left, she also stopped taking care of her dog, so she would just take it right outside her front door to cow and never cleaned it up. I don't even know her name, but I know more about her personal life than probably most of her friends do. Story 38 my downstairs neighbor is a fit, active, and energetic woman in her mid-60s, who looks like she's in her late 40 aches. S. She at almost any hour of the day, a few times a week, which normally would be fine, but she cries when she does it. She cries, moans, and calls out to God. It is incredibly strange, and it's the worst when it wakes me up at 3 a.m. Story 39. I've moved out now, but I used to live in such a place. Hearing arguments was pretty commonplace, and you could get pretty blasé about it. Until one night, I heard an argument about 11 p.m. coming from above. I had work the next day, so I was a bit pissed, but fell asleep anyway despite them persisting in their shouting match. I woke about 2 or 3 a.m. roughly, with the female voice sounding out only one thing. Help me. Help me. Help me. I don't think I've been so sure to call 999 ever in my life. The police came pretty quick, although I did not give a statement. They were there until 8 a.m., so it must have been something awful given the number of police that was there. I never did find out what really happened, and I don't think I ever want to. Just hope she was all right in the end. Story 40. A young couple moved in next door, and they had to be late teens, early 20s. S. Every day, without fail, I would be unwillingly hear dramatic arguments about how his family doesn't accept her or that he was texting other girls. One time she yelled, You don't fight for us, Kevin! I was so exasperated, yet so emotionally absorbed in this soap opera I had relentlessly been subjected to that I also yelled, God damn it! Fight for her, Kevin! It was followed by eerie silence. I know it was wrong of me to interject myself, but cowman, what about me? What about my feelings? They moved out shortly after that. Flipping Kevin. Story 41. Not an apartment, but my freshman dorm room had paper-thin walls. I heard my next-door neighbor banging his girlfriend every night, who was having very fake orgasms. On the other side lived my RA, who would have nightly calls to his mom, crying about how he wanted to commit and how life wasn't worth living. That was a fun year. Story 42. This was our first M counter of the new neighbors moving in upstairs. Wife, if you flipping fart one more time, you will regret it. The door slams, opens back up, thunder coming down the stairs as he is running from her. Glass breaking, then the undeniable sound of the fire extinguisher. Wife, there, since you peach seems to be on fire. Yeah, welcome to the neighborhood. She sprayed her husband and our front door down with the fire extinguisher in the first 10 mins. It only went downhill from there. Story 43. Back when I was starting to learn the violin and still sounded like a duck in pain, I lived in a cheap apartment next to a preacher and his family. I happened to be practicing one day, and they responded by turning up their TV louder and louder. When this failed to drown me out, I heard, O oh Lord, that art in heaven. May you use your divine mercy to cast out the evil spirits that doth make that hellish noise like a billion damned souls. When that failed, the guy's wife went right up to the wall and yelled, Whatever the hell that is, knock it off. Story 44. I lived on the second of three floors. Below me, there was a couple who scheduled their fights for Saturday night. You could hear the female absolutely berating the male, saying how he looked at another girl while they were out or something like that, and he would do nothing but resignedly respond in a monotone voice. I couldn't hear his side. It was very much like the teacher in Charlie Brown. Then, the morning after, without fail, they would have crazy loud makeup close relationship. Above me was a drummer. Now I wouldn't mind it, except he practiced early and late and never really got any better. It was painful. Luckily, he was kicked out and the punching bag guy took his place. At least he kept a consistent beat, even when it shook my entire apartment. Story 45. Not what I'd heard, but what I'd done. Post-shower lounging in towel. PC is on the floor because I'm broke and can't afford a table. Sit down and don't realize my peach is on the carpet since it felt like the towel. And I farted. I mean a massive fart. The way I was sitting had it drumming on the floor like a bomb. Then there was a moment of shocked silence before I heard through the floor. What the fudge? Story 46. 
When myself and my housemates were moving into our new house, we were cooking some food in our kitchen living room and messing around. We were all singing really loudly and badly. Lots of really dramatic wailing like opera singers and just not taking ourselves too seriously. And when we finally hit this incredibly high note, I think it was Abba, we heard that our neighbors were laughing and applauding us. We loudly shouted sorry and just tried to keep quiet for the rest of the night. But they seemed pretty chill with it. Story 47. So many things. 1. Dude downstairs tried to learn Eric Clapton's Tears in Heaven for months, but could only play the first three notes. 2. Upstairs neighbor playing the organ. I knew him, so if I heard him, I'd text him song requests. 3. Different downstairs neighbor used to have long, loud weekday parties. We told them to STFU around 11 p.m. and they did, until they started again at 3 a.m. Called the cops and had a good time listening through the floorboards to them and trying to defend themselves. 4. The best one. The exploits of the neighbor's four-year-old son. Most mornings he was happy, but some mornings he had meltdowns. He was very good at yelling, I don't want to. And by the sounds of it, there were a lot of things he didn't want, but the rest of his sentences were lost to whining and crying. I got to hear about the theme he wanted for his next birthday party and how his hand now smelled like poop because he accidentally touched his butthole. One morning, he was super happy to go to preschool and then he had a meltdown and didn't want to go anymore because he got his sock wet. Great kid. Story 48. My previous apartment was an absolute owned by a guy who can most accurately be described by the word slum. He rented primarily to illegal immigrants, convicted felons people who would be afraid to complain about the living conditions. I am not an illegal immigrant, nor am I a convicted felon, and I made this landlord's life hell by demanding that he fix everything that wasn't up to code and notifying the Board of Health when he didn't. The family to our right was a Mexican family, a couple and their four elementary school-aged children. One night, I heard them arguing about trying to get their family out of this apartment complex and into a better living situation. All of a sudden, the lady yelled, You didn't even have the balls to make, the landlord, fix the broken septic tank. Maybe I should be having this conversation with the kid next door. I'm pretty sure I laughed loud enough to be heard by the entire complex. Story 49. My neighbor across the hall, middle-aged man, blasts Rihanna and argues on the phone, and my old neighbor below me snored. Not complaining, though, when you live in an apartment building, you're going to hear other people. The only time I got annoyed with hearing my neighbors was when someone was trying to play Christmas songs on a trumpet. I hate Christmas songs, so hearing someone struggling on a trumpet gets real annoying, real fast. Story 50. Heard my obnoxiously white female neighbor call her mixed race daughter the N-word on several occasions. I never said anything about it until her baby daddy tried to pick a fight with me about two weeks ago. I'm an antisocial person by nature. So he was sitting on their porch and I accidentally made eye contact with him. Didn't say anything to him and just kept walking to my apartment. He jumped in my face and started claiming I was for not saying hi to a man. His yelling caused all the other neighbors in the area to come out to see what was going on. I told him flat out, you want? I've heard your baby mama call her daughter the N-word several different times. Ask any of these neighbors. They'll tell you the same thing. Long story short, that caused a fight that lasted until about 3 a.m. the next morning. They got evicted and moved out over this past weekend and I've never been happier to see someone move. Story 51. Domestic violence. Once heard the meth head downstairs neighbor being strangled by her meth head boyfriend. Woke up at 3 a.m. to thumping on the walls and heard choking noises. Then a squeaker. Stop! I can't breathe! Followed by more choking noises. I called the cops immediately, and they showed up like two minutes later. Arrested the guy for battery, possession, and paraphernalia. Because I requested a follow-up phone call, I was told at about 5 a.m. that she put in for an order of protection against him and I shouldn't have to worry about his BS anymore. Saw him again going back into that apartment about two weeks later. The neighbor, probably 55 but looked 70, cursed me out a month or so later after she figured out it was me they called the cops. I guess she preferred death to not having her meth friend around. Story 52. The people in the apartment next door were both girls. One had a saxophone and kept playing Careless Whisper. Then the saxophone stops, having a few minutes of silence follow. Then I hear one of them say, We forgot about Jedi which was followed by a door slam. Turns out Jedi was their dog and they forgot he went outside to use the bathroom. Someone found him about a block over. Not the funniest story, but probably one that went from zero to 100 real fast. Story 53. When I first moved into my previous apartment, there was family living on the first floor right below us. When the parents weren't screaming at each other, they were screaming at their little girl. But we quickly realized they were moving out within the month, so we endured and hoped the next neighbors would be better. They weren't. Two women moved in and things were rocky from the start. The first night, they had an incredibly loud close relationship. A few days later, the arguing began. From what we could gather, woman one wasn't sure they were ready to move in together, 
and woman two took that to mean she was having doubts about the relationship. For a few weeks, they alternated between close relationship and fighting. The last fight they had, woman two accused woman one of cheating, and woman one insisted there was no one else. Apparently, the relationship ended that night, only about a month after they moved in together. The next day, woman two moved out. That evening, woman one had a male friend over, and from the sound of it, she had definitely been cheating. Story 54. Years ago, I was living in a second-floor apartment, and I got the flu. I was confined to my bed, sleeping as much as possible, and a power outage in the building terminated my white noise, so I could hear everything exceptionally well, like the guy downstairs furiously finishing, then starting over again. Okay, yeah, I think, and try to go back to sleep. Sometime later, I woke up to hear the cops and the apartment manager outside with a megaphone telling the guy he had to vacate the apartment and come with them and him refusing to come outside. I wandered over to the window, wondering if this was really happening or just some bizarre fever dream. I've forgotten all the back and forth, but he was yelling profanities at them. So the manager got the megaphone and said, Sir, you need to calm down. The guy shouts back, Calm! I'm calm. Serenity now. Like from Seinfeld. To this day, when I'm feeling stressed, I think that to myself. Serenity now. Story 55. In college, I lived below a group of 18, 21-year-old guys. My roommates and I heard a pretty intense fight one night and almost called the cops because it sounded like they were getting violent. It went on for a half hour. Lots of slamming, stomping, aggressive yelling. We couldn't quite make out what they were saying until we heard one of them yell, Don't touch my flipping Pop-Tarts ever again! And he got in his car and left. My roommates and I exploded into giggles. Story 56. My upstairs neighbor, I thought his bed spring squeaked, so I thought he was having close relationship or jumping on his bed or getting in and out of bed all day long. I finally had enough and went upstairs and knocked on his door. He answered almost immediately, fully dressed. I just blurted it out. It sounds like you're having close relationship all day. He totally laughed and asked me to come in. I followed him in and he used the second bedroom as an office and it was his goddamn office chair that squeaked. He sat on it and it wasn't near as loud as it was in my apartment. I don't know if there is some scientific engineering of floors and walls. Reason for this. But he replaced the chair and put a rug under it. Best neighbor ever. Then he got a girlfriend and was actually having close relationship. Yep, heard that too. Story 57. One of my flatmates is French, so one night after going out, he brought a girl back home, told her he was French and everything. And while they were having close relationship, she told him to speak to her in French. My flatmate, still being completely drunk, didn't think of anything else and started counting in French to which I couldn't stop laughing from the next room. Story 58. Few years ago, we used to hear our neighbors a lot. My favorite two instances were, one, when they got a rescue puppy, we heard them discover that it had cow in their bed while they were out too. After they had a late night out, at about 3 a.m. we heard them flipping, or so we thought. A few minutes later, we heard the husband come back. The fist fight that ensued ended with one party having their head slammed into a radiator. Least favorite instance was when we heard them beat the dog. We called the RSPCA immediately when we heard that, and the dog was removed from their care. They were deeply unpleasant people, as I'm sure you can imagine based on these stories. Story 59. Yes, yes, finally! So! Close to midnight, I started to hear a bunch of random barking sounds from one of the apartments near me. Loud enough to wake me up. Then I start coming to and start processing what I'm actually hearing. And as it turns out, my neighbors were legitimately fighting. Arguing back and forth, and it got to a point where all you could hear was things being tossed and the guy begging her to stop, and then I heard it. He sobbed, Why would you look at my phone while I'm in the shower? You should have waited. Now, if you've ever heard a Hispanic woman go off on a guy, the insults start to meld into each other like machine gun fire. Turns out he'd been cheating a lot and had been gaslighting her for months. Then he caved. Okay, yes, I cheated on you, but it's only because you were being negligent. She paused for a second, but it felt like a lifetime. I was stunned. This woman is always around. They're always going on camping trips and doing outdoorsy stuff. It's not like they work often or long hours. She began tossing more things, packed her stuff, and left after launching another barrage of insults. They're still together. Story 60. My old roommate's bedroom was right next to mine, and I could hear him playing video games all the time. He was always playing with his friend online named Fred. It wasn't until maybe a month later that I found out that Fred was short for Frederica, and she was from Europe. It just kind of blew my mind. Story 61. My husband and I have lived in apartments since we got married over eight years ago. So each place has its most memorable neighbor story. Believe it or not, none of these places seemed like bad places to live on face value. However, the first three turned out to be pretty crappy the longer we stayed. First place, we heard domestic violence in the apartment beneath us where the husband literally threw the wife into a wall. We called the cops immediately and so did the neighbors next door. The cops showed up and took everyone's statements. 
and the couple broke up and the guy moved out very shortly after. The woman didn't stay long, but at least she didn't have to stay with that guy anymore. Second place. We were just settling onto the couch in the evening to watch a movie, when suddenly we heard wild screaming from upstairs and loud thumping as someone stumbled down the stairs. It was our female neighbor screaming that her cousin was going to stab her. My husband charged outside to grab our neighbor's hand and pull her into our apartment, and I called the police. Turns out she'd been letting her cousin stay for a few weeks, and the cousin had some major mental health issues. Thankfully, our neighbor didn't get stabbed, but half of her weave had been ripped out, and her scalp was injured a bit. The cousin got arrested a few days later, for reasons unknown, so thankfully things were quiet for us and our neighbor after that. Third place, heard our next-door neighbor, a young woman living alone, getting extremely drunk and trying to assault some of our other neighbors who were having a party in the same building. Then when the cops were called, the drunk woman charged at an officer and they had to tase her. First time didn't phase her at all. Second time finally knocked her down so they could take her in. A month later, she knocked on our door absolutely wrecked and ill. Turns out, she'd been trying to get sober, but a cow friend had brought her some alcohol and she drank the whole thing and it was horribly interfering with one of her meds. We tried our best to help her. She could barely walk and called an ambulance when she asked and made sure that her dog had food and water. Her parents came and helped her move out shortly after that. I'm pretty sure she checked herself into rehab. I hope she's doing better now. Fourth and current place. Thankfully, our fourth apartment is a lot calmer than previous homes we've had. There has been the occasional loud argument or party, but mostly people here keep to themselves. A lot more people have cats here, so during the day when everyone is out, you'll see a bunch of cats sitting in windows watching the outside. Very wholesome. Story 62. My upstairs neighbor used to blast the music and get really excited and stomp, clap, and yell, Whoa! really loud. It was so funny me and my husband never said anything about it. Four years later, in a move to our own home, my husband will stomp his feet, clap, and make that sound when a good song comes on. Story 63. New duplex neighbor Mark, freshly divorced white guy in IT that kept to himself. These are studio apartments, so just one big room. I don't watch TV, so I lead a pretty quiet life, so Mark's life became fascinating. Didn't talk other than initial greet where he said he'd begun learning the guitar as men in that situation do. I heard abstract Seven Nation Army on repeat, sometimes with strange voices you only use in private, like a Jamaican Kermit the Frog, sometimes cursing at himself and sometimes just a couple ill-timed plucks in between intervals of crying, ranging from small sniffles to a couple heaving, soul-shredding, throat-straining animal cries. I would see him taking out the trash and feel like I knew him. I could hear his calls to his mom, honest, to his friends, exaggerated and followed by long sighs, to his lawyer, defeated, broken. I heard his pizza order, his views on ref calls, his own rendition of a cooking show when he would describe pour out the water a paper towel and wrapping leftover pizza in it before microwaving it. He kept at the guitar nearly every night and could eventually play on time, but never really played any other songs, just kept patiently practicing that one. Skip a couple rough months forward to me losing my goddamn mind silently through the wall when he played it for his date. My flipping god, I was on the edge of my seat, flailing my arms like a conductor. I felt like a pageant mom. My man, Mark, played it flawlessly and the girl loved it. I cried. Cried. Through the wall, just a part of some other story but feeling right there with this stranger. Don't know how my emotions got involved but I was so proud of him. I regret not telling him that I knew when I moved out. Maybe he knew. Mark, you flipping legend, you were right. They couldn't hold you back. Keep going and don't doubt yourself, Jamaican Kermit be believing in you, mun. Story 64. I woke up at 6 a.m. hearing the sound of a nuclear warning siren on full blast coming from the bedroom wall connected to mine, like shockingly loud. One minute later it changes to a car alarm, one minute later it's a whistle, so on and so forth for one and a half hours. I went to work angry and sleepy, thinking who would leave such a thing on and not be home to turn it off. It happens again the next morning too, and after 30 men staring at my wall, I go over and knock loudly on the door. No answer. Again, I think who would go on vacation and leave such an obnoxiously loud thing? Alarm? What is happening over there? On before leaving the house. On the fourth day in a row, this happened I call my landlord and leave a stern letter in the door and head to work again sleepy and mad. Upon returning home, there is a note in my door that reads, I am so sorry I did not realize our walls were so thin and it was waking you up. I just moved in. I am a deep sleeper and need this every morning to wake up. From a coma? I will try to turn it down some and move it off of our shared wall. They did turn it down from a 9 to like a 3. 4, but I still hear it every morning, FML. Six months later, I'm moving apartments next week. Story 65. Late at night, I used to tap on my windowsill while I waited for the sun to come up. One day, I heard a faint tap return. 
After testing it a few times, me and my neighbor had a tapping conversation back and forth for around 20 minutes. It was wholesome and helped me actually sleep instead of tossing and turning until sunrise. Story 66. My upstairs neighbor was having a swingers party with the windows open so everyone could hear. So me and my ex yelled things like, pull her hair, and slap that peach to laughter from upstairs. The next morning, we received a note on our door. It said we were both cordially invited to next week's swingers party. A quick look at the guests leaving later that day made our decision for us. There were a lot of dirty hippies in that group. Story 67. This isn't necessarily what I overheard. Both me and my mother were out of town when it happened. She was coming home when it happened, and I was down south visiting my dad for Christmas. But about 11 years ago, when I was like six, some kid who snuck into our apartment building and terminated a cop right in front of our apartment door. The dude was sneaking into his GFS apartment because her parents weren't home, and the cop asked him if he lived there. The kid lied, and I'm guessing the officer found out so there was a bit of a scuffle. At one point or another, the kid got a hold of the cop's gun and him while he was down after falling down the stairs. When my mom got home, our door was broken into due to the officers looking for the guy. They tracked in brains into our house, apparently, so that's fun. The part, though, was this little scarecrow I had outside our door that my mom had to throw away. It was drenched in blood and brain matter. This also happened right after Christmas, so it was probably extra traumatic for both the victim and the shooter's family. I don't even live in a dangerous part of Metro Detroit. I live in the suburbs. So it was really shocked. The officers at the police station where the cop was from come and light candles with his badge number every year on the anniversary. I'm almost 18 now, and I think about that cop every time I walk in the communal hallway. If you want to learn more, just Google it. I'm sure many articles will pop up. It was highly covered in Michigan, the rest of the country. Edit. It wasn't a Detroit PD officer. It was the local police department. Might have actually been a state officer because I live right next to their station. I'd link an article, but I'd rather people find things on their own for my own privacy, as I still live in the same building as I did 10 years ago. Story 68. At 12 a.m. on a weeknight. Downstairs, neighbors arguing, yelling. The woman was upset and said, You'd be sad if anyone in your family passed away. But would you even care if I passed away? And they went on and on, and eventually my BF got up and yelled through the floor, Shut the fudge up! And all of a sudden she gasps and says, Look, now they're telling us to shut up. That's on you. I feel bad because they're miserable. But I also feel bad for myself. Because this is on a near constant basis. And I never get a good night's sleep. Apartment complex life is cow. I can hear the husband snoring through the night. I can hear them chatting in bed. I can hear his alarm in the morning and her yelling at him to wake up. Same guy doesn't even say thank you when I hold the door open for him and has a dad's against daughter's dating sticker with a rifle on it. So he can go fudge himself. Story 69. I could hear my neighbor regularly beat the cow out of his stupid girlfriend. Stupid because even after the cops were called multiple times, she denied everything. The last time I got fed up with it and devised a plan. The next time he was beating her up, called the cops and had them come in my apt and quietly and listen from my bedroom so they could personally hear everything. And it worked. They busted in his door, arrested him, and let his peach sit out on the curb for 45 minutes in a 15-degree ice fog in his boxers while they took their time processing the scene. Never saw the unpleasant person again. Story 70. My bedroom wall adjoined the neighbors. They got a divorce and she stayed in the apartment. She proceeded to bring home a different dude every night for a month and would get pounded by them. I could hear everything. The slapping of ball sack on her. The moans. Even minor ones. And even the gag when she took too much in her throat. It was so flipping annoying. I went through so much flipping KY. Story 71. This happened about five years. I had lived in a townhouse and I heard crying noises every night. I never really thought anything about it. Until one day I heard the girl from next door running away from her drunk husband. I called the cops. And they said say he has a bad criminal history. I felt bad for not calling the cops earlier. Story 72. A candy bust, domestic disputes, lots of close relationship, and one by gun. The was the worst. I was with my girlfriend and we heard it. Sounded like a revolver at the range. I told my girlfriend I thought it was a... She convinced me I was crazy. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning, and we had just gotten in from a party. The next morning, the police came to my door, and she immediately burst into tears. I told them what I heard and why we didn't call. It messed up her up for days. Later that week, we found out her father had cancer. Our relationship and her father passed away within the following six months. That was probably the beginning of the worst part of my life, which seems to keep dragging on. I think about that a lot. Story 73. When I moved out for the first time into my new apartment, I, 22F, was completely alone at night and got scared of every little nose. One night on the first week of getting settled in, I heard a bunch of coughing followed by panicked yelling, then silence. 
Shortly after, a fire truck pulls up in front of my apartment, and from my stairs I watch them carry up a stretcher into my neighbor's apartment. They spoke with someone in the apartment for a while, then came back down with nobody in the stretcher. I thought my neighbor had passed away. I texted my neighbor to find out what was going on, wondering if he was dead. And he replied, I choked on some ham because I'm a pig. I'm all right now. Story 74. I lived in a one-bedroom a few years ago and was woken up in the middle of the night by a scream. Then the sound of throwing things, and what really scared me was when a woman screamed, Somebody help me! I was sure I was hearing my neighbor being disappeared. I called 911 immediately, and when the sirens neared the complex, the guy who was hurting this woman bolted into the woods. They chased after him and caught him, took my statement, and I really hope she was able to stay away from him. I'm pretty sure it was a domestic violence situation that had reached a break.